Okay, let's begin our presentation about Microsoft Excel. Okay, so let's go to full screen. Just a moment. Okay, now we're going to start by introducing Microsoft Excel. What we're going to see in this presentation is an introduction on Microsoft Excel and then some general uh, stuff about it. Then we're going to move on to tables fun and functions finally. Okay, just a moment. Let's start with an introduction. Microsoft Excel is a software from Microsoft Office suite of products. It is primarily used for calculations, spreadsheets, and or to organize tables. Okay. To open Microsoft Excel, you either double click on its icon or search for Excel in the Windows Explorer menu and click on it once. Okay. Or this is or not all. It's a typo. Okay. Now, if you search for, <coughs> if you excuse me, if you search for Microsoft Excel in the uh, Windows Start menu, you can click on it once and it will open Microsoft Excel. Or else you can uh, double click on the icon on the desktop. Okay. Now, let's start with some general stuff. Excel shares many similarities with Microsoft Word. When clicking on a single cell, you select the cell. The rows are de designated by numbers and the columns by letters. Okay. When you click on the letter this, this, this designating a column, the entire column is selected. Same with the number designating the row. Okay, let's, I'm going to show you an example of this. Let's open Microsoft Excel. Okay. Let's see. Now, the rows are designated by numbers and the columns are designated by letters okay now whenever you select a cell the cell is an intersection between the uh, the column and the row okay so this cell right here is the intersection between the column c and the row number five okay so this cell is called c5 you start with the column and you end with the row okay let's continue here uh, this uh, we notice the similar layout between microsoft excel and microsoft word one second We notice the similar layout between them. Uh, now, uh, you're, you're, uh, I imagine you're familiar with uh, the options on Microsoft Word. Uh, any options that are shared between the two uh, serve the same function, okay? So if, for example, in Microsoft Excel, we click on this B right here. It makes the text bold. Same, same with the, the same with Microsoft Word. Okay. Uh, anyways, so 
if for example you want to change the font in Microsoft Excel it works the same way with Microsoft Word okay underline text italic uh, everything uh, is shared between them okay it is very similar all right one second For example, if we want to, for example, change the font, we can do it the same way with Microsoft Word. Same thing with the uh, text size, everything, okay? We can even insert pictures, shapes. Works the same way, okay? It works the same way. We can resize, we can move the shape around so it's essentially the same it, it essentially has the same basic options okay now if we click and drag across the canvas we will select multiple cells. Let's see the example only. Okay. Um, you uh, you mean the video? Could I post the, uh, this video today? Yes, I will uh, post it shortly after we're, we're done. I will post the video, okay? So, let's continue. For example, let's see an example of what I told you just now. We can select multiple cells by first selecting a single cell and then clicking and dragging across okay notice here whenever I move my cursor I'm still clicking okay I haven't let go of uh, my mouse okay we can select multiple cells this way okay Let's go back to the presentation. Now, if we click here, what it says is merge and center. Merges, it merges the selected cells into a single large cell and places the cursor at the center. Okay. Let's try it here. Notice here we have a single cell. Okay. We had multiple cells, but when I clicked on merge and center, it merged the, the, all the cells into a single large cell and it put the cursor, the mouse cursor, in the center. Okay? Tables. To create tables in, in Microsoft Excel, we first select a bunch of cells, then we click on the borders uh, drop down menu, and we select all borders. Okay? Simple. Let's go and try it out. Let's go back to the previous. Let's select bunch of cells and and then let's go to the borders drop down menu the drop down menu this little arrow right here and then we have different options to choose from we're going to choose all borders okay this way every cell is perfectly highlighted okay
let us continue we can resize rows and columns by clicking between two rows or two columns and dragging up or down in case of a row and right or left for a column okay like so let's say I want to enlarge this column okay we move them like this between two columns and then we click and drag right left right to left or left to right in the case of a column and in the case of a row for example we click between two rows and then click and resize okay notice the cells are of a different size to the regular ones this time around okay functions okay any arithmetic operation in Excel should be preceded with an equal sign for it to be calculated okay simple if there isn't an equal sign before an arithmetic operation it will be treated as a regular text okay for example the expression 9 plus 2 written in a cell uh, stays as is uh, meaning it doesn't change to 11 okay it is not calculated it is treated as simple text okay however the expression equals 9 plus 2 changes to 11 okay the arithmetic operators are plus for addition minus for subtraction subtraction uh, star sign for multiplication and the slash for division okay simple let's try it out okay let's start with a simple expression 5 plus 6 nothing changed stays as 5 plus 6 let's move to the cell right next to it and write equals 5 plus 6 now whenever we click or uh, or uh, or uh, move to a different cell this value changed to 11 meaning that it treated it as an arithmetic operation not as regular text uh, like the cell that preceded it okay so we can do 6 times 2 we can do 6 divided by 2 and so on okay 6 minus 2 don't forget to precede it Three minus one. Apologize. Equals. Goes to two. Okay. Let's continue with the functions. We can insert a function in the cell by first selecting the cell. Let's continue. We can insert a function in a cell first by selecting the cell, then writing the function inside the cell. For example, uh, sum equals sum of 5 comma 4 this calculates the sum of 5 plus 4 okay and gives us a result of 9 okay let's try it out for example let's go with this cell let's two equals then write sum of 5 comma 4 okay 
gave us a result of 9. Now notice whenever I uh, click on the cell, select the cell, uh, here in this large cell above the Excel spreadsheet, we see the function that is executed in the cell, okay? Not the value that it, that it gives us, okay? Let's continue. We can also, for example, write a function like so equals sum of b1, d1, and b9, okay, separated by commas, which calculates the sum of the numbers in the cells b1, d1, d4, and b9, and writes the result in the cell that contains the function. For example, let's, uh, let's try this. Let's go to the top. Let's, for example, give this a value of 5, and then this value of 8. Here, we give it a value of 6. Okay? And here, we write our function, okay? Equals the sum of, for example, let's say A2, B4, and D2. A2, A2, comma, B4, comma, D2. Okay. Let's close it out. Let's click on enter. Notice that it calculated the sum of 5 plus 6 plus 8. Okay. 11 plus 8 equals 19. Okay. When we click on the function in this enlarged cell above the Excel spreadsheet, it highlights the cells that uh, participate that participate or are a part of the uh, calculation. Okay, A2, B4, and D2. Okay, let's continue. We can also insert a function into a selected cell by selecting the cell, then clicking F of X on top of the Excel worksheet. Okay, we can copy the function by grabbing the lower right corner of the cell and dragging down. The function then will be applied to all the cells selected. Okay, we're going to see an example of this. An example of this, for example, let's open, let's go with this document, okay, let's, for example, we don't need this, let's go with, well, you will understand what I'm doing shortly. 14 Notice here the function is applied. Why is it applied? Because first I've written the function here in this cell. Notice that when I click on this cell, it gives me the value of the function that is applied in this cell. C3 times 0 0.25 plus d3 times 0 0.25 plus e3 times 0 0.5 okay if i want this function to be applied to all the cells beneath this one i'm gonna grab the lower right corner until i see a black plus sign and then i click and drag okay Okay, notice here it gave me all zeros. Why do you think that it gave me all zeros? 
because here this is f10 f10 is c10 times 0 0.25 plus d10 times 0 0.25 plus e10 times 0 0.5 okay notice that these c10 d10 and e10 already have values that's why uh, it gave us a value that is not zero okay here the value of the cells notice here it is the sum of c12 times 0 0.25 plus d12 times 0 0.25 plus e12 times 0 0.5 okay c12 d12 and e12 don't have any values okay so it considers them zeros that's why it gave us zeros for example let's change a value let's give this a value of 10 let's give this one a value of 10 notice here the value changed from 0 to 2.5 because here we have 10 we don't have 0 anymore when we change the other cells okay it changes the, it changes the the values accordingly it recalculates the value of this cell according to the values of these cells that are entered okay the reason why this is still empty because I copied the function on the uh, applied to the F column okay I didn't apply the function on the G column okay let's try this one okay let's grab this one here we have if F11 is inferior or equal to 6 we write to big else if F11 is inferior to 10 right in there else if f11 is inferior to 13 right motosip if f11 is inferior to 17 right tehni a if none of them uh, uh, are satisfied right mts meaning that the uh, the value of f11 is greater than or equal to 17 okay let's grab the lower right corner and drag across okay it should give us all to be okay because they are they are all zeros okay is it clear for example let's go back let's insert another function okay let's write another function okay let's select a cell and then click on f of x here here we can choose what function we want to apply let's stick with sum because it's the easiest okay here we can write the numbers that are that, that are going to uh, participate in the sum okay or we can select cells okay here notice when i clicked on the cell c10 it put c10 inside the number one uh, slot okay now i can change that value however i see fit let's move on to the number two number three number four and then click OK. Here we've inserted a function using a different method. OK. Excuse me. OK, so let's continue with the presentation. These are the steps that we've seen earlier. OK. Whenever you select a cell, here in this elongated cell, just above uh, the Excel worksheet, you can see the function that is applied in this cell, okay? This is an, another example.
on the function that we've just seen a nested if function and for the video courses you can click here thank you for your attention this is the summary of what we've seen on Microsoft Excel do any of you have any questions if not we're gonna move on to Microsoft PowerPoint and then uh, go back to Microsoft Word and that's it content we're going to start with an introduction then general stuff and then we're going to move to animations transitions and finally hyperlinks okay this summarizes what we've seen in, on microsoft powerpoint microsoft powerpoint is a program from the microsoft office suite it uses present uh, presentation it is used for presentations in the form of, of slideshows okay just a moment These presentations are supposed to represent topics in a simplified and concise form, okay? <clears throat> to open Microsoft PowerPoint, you either double click on the PowerPoint icon in the, or in the desktop or you search for it in the Windows Start menu. Same thing with Microsoft Word and Excel. Nothing different, okay? So let's start with, the, with some general stuff, okay? Here we have the slides, a preview of the slides in our presentation. This is a preview of the current slide, the current or active slide, okay? And this is the current slide or the active slide. Um, here, if you notice this arrow right here, if you click on this tiny linear icon, in the bottom uh, you pass to slideshow mode the uh, the one you're seeing right here uh, where the animations uh, and transitions are played okay full screen mode you can pass to this mode uh, uh, by clicking on this tiny little icon here or clicking on f5 F5 on your keyboard, okay? Okay, so notice the uh, yet similar layout with Microsoft Word and Excel. Uh, what we mean by this is uh, when you see uh, the, the similar layout means they, they have similar functionalities okay so if you want to change the font size you click on the on the font size this drop down menu or uh, these A's right here this makes the text smaller this makes it bigger here we can change the font okay here we can change this text alignment we have numbered list bulleted list and so on okay the uh, only difference is this little s right here 
which is used to add shadow behind the text. Okay? General stuff. The insert tab, which is again very similar to Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel, meaning that you can insert shapes, pictures, and everything. Uh, the same with Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. Okay? Okay, here we have the design tab we, uh, where you can cho choose a different style for your slides. Okay, you can change this, uh, the style of the slides. Animations. Animations are import an important tool in Microsoft PowerPoint. Animations help you better bring your point across and avoid complicating your presentation. They also help, to help you avoid clutter and animations can be used on any element item within a slide within a slide when i say within a slide meaning the these are elements this animations this word is an element this uh, item here these items here are an element notice this uh, element is animated so are the elements before it okay Let's go back and give you a preview, okay? Animations. Notice that the word animation itself is animated, okay? This is considered an item within a slide, okay? Animations. These are items that are animated, okay? Animations can be used on any element item within a slide, like text, images, bullet points bullet points like these these are bullet points okay shapes to insert an animation on an item we first select the item then go to the animations tab and select an animation from the available ones okay or we can click on add animation and choose one from the available ones okay we can use more than one animation on an item. For example, we have three types of animations. We have entrance animation, emphasis animations, and uh, exit animations. You can combine the three, okay? We can also add an exit animation to an item by clicking on add animation, then choosing one of the available exit animations, okay? For example, Animations are numbered in order of their appearance. To change the order of the animations, you first click on the number representing the animation. For example, this uh, here, we, I clicked on the number 2, which uh, represents the second animation to be animated, okay? And then you click on move earlier or move later, here uh, where the arrow is pointing to move the animation earlier or later, okay? Um, uh, Muhammad Murad, what did you not understand? specifically uh, if you want we can do a demonstration okay we can do a demonstration let's let's finish let's first finish with transitions and then we're gonna do a demonstration of animations and transitions okay transitions Transitions, uh, as their name suggests, stand for the transition animations between slides, okay? Animations are used on items within a slide, but transitions are used on the slide itself, okay? To use transitions, we go to the Transitions tab and select one of the available styles, okay? For example, this is animated. We have the transition tab. We can choose a style of tra for transition. 
For example, notice that this slide contains a transition. Okay. Here, I've used the push style here. The new slide pushes the old slide up. Okay. For example, if we click on this arrow, it gives us different types of transitions. Uh, notice here, when I click the arrow, the image disappears. Uh, why the, the, did the image disappear? Because I've used two animations on this uh, image, okay? An appearance animation and an exit animation, okay? Two animations in one image, okay? Let's see, for example, let's go to the animations tab here. This is the old image. The old image, notice that when I clicked on the old image, it highlighted two animations, okay? Number two and number four, okay? Number two and number four. Number three is for the arrow, okay? Number two, number three is for the arrow. Number four is the disappearance of the first image. And number five is for the appearance of the new image, okay? Let's replay this to better illustrate my point, okay? This is the, the first animation is for the word transitions. The second animation is, the, is for the appearance of the first image. The third animation is for the appearance of this arrow. The fourth animation is for the disappearance of both the arrow and the first image. And the fifth animation is for the appearance of this image. Oh, uh, everything you've seen is contained within one slide, okay? I have two images, okay? Notice here, I have two images. Here, when I highlight the first image, we have two animations. The second and fourth one, okay? This arrow contains two animations, the third and the fourth one, okay? Uh, so, if you want, for example, to move the arrow after the image has disappeared, we move later, okay? Here we have the first animation which is the word transitions and then the image appears then disappears and then the arrow appears and it disappears and the last image uh, the last image uh, to appear is this one okay animation number five okay let's put everything for example Let's move later. Let's move this later. Notice here the arrow and the image, the first image, share the exit animation. Okay, they are both on number four. Okay, let's Put everything back and let's preview this, uh, preview this once more. Okay, we have the word transitions and then the image and then the arrow and then they disappear in the, at the same time. And then we have the last image which contains a preview of the transitions available to us. Okay, this is another transition. Um, before I continue, uh, is it clear? Okay, Muhammad Murad. Fantastic. Let's continue. Okay, let's continue with hyperlinks. Okay, hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are links you can insert in your presentation. Hyperlinks can be added to any item within a slide. For example, they can be added to pictures, text, bullet points, shapes. 
for example, there are, there are three types of hyperlinks, okay? Hyperlinks that redirect you to another slide in your presentation, okay? Hyperlinks that open another file on uh, from your computer, okay? Hyperlinks that redirect you to an external web page, okay? Excuse me. To insert a hyperlink, we need first to select the item where we want to insert the link. Then we go to the insert tab, then we click on link. Okay? After we click on link, let's go back and after you click on link first you need to select the item where you want to insert the link for example if I've selected this bullet point right here as highlighted in this image and then I click on I go to the insert tab and click on this thing right here link after you click on this you're presented with this window here okay with this window here Notice the first thing we've got is an existing file or web page. What this means is an, it either opens an existing file on your computer, okay, as highlighted here it, uh, in these, uh, this courses uh, folder. I have different files. I can choose that. Uh, I can choose so that the link. When I click the link, it opens a file on my computer, okay. Choose a file from these files here. You can choose a file from the same folder. Or when we click on this right here, we can locate another file from the computer. Okay? We're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that very shortly. We can also write the address of the web page we want our li our link to redirect to. Okay? We write the address of the web page here. Okay. So the second option is when we click on a place in this document. This uh, uh, using this, the link will redirect to another slide in the same presentation. Okay. This concludes. Our presentation uh, notice that the transition this transition is called curtains uh, the transitions are used on the slide itself they aren't used on uh, on a, an element within a slide okay this is the difference between animations and uh, and transitions okay animations are used on items within a slide uh, the uh, transitions are used on the slides themselves, okay? So, let's, for example, try to insert hyperlinks here, okay? We can insert hyperlinks wherever we see fit. For example, let's... Let's just use, for example, let's use this image right here, or let's insert another image. Let's use, for example, this image. We can use this image or any other image, okay? Doesn't really matter, okay? If we click here, then go to the Insert tab and then click on Link, we can uh, use this picture to open, for example, an, a file on this computer. For example, we can use it to open Microsoft Excel. This file right here. And then 
when we move to if I click on this image here it opens Microsoft Excel notice here it opened the uh, summary of Microsoft Excel okay let's uh, try and ch let's change the link okay let's go for example to let's insert this link now whenever I click on this image it takes me to google.com okay let's try it let's click on this image notice it opened google.com it was successful okay now the third uh, now the third thing the third or the third type of link of hyperlink is the internal hyperlink hyperlink we select place in this document and then let's choose uh, let's choose let's say for example I want it to uh, take me to the first slide named animations okay okay here the highlight says the hint says anime animations okay let's go back to the presentation mode and let's click on the image it took us to the animations slide okay these are the three ty different types of hyperlinks okay is everything clear is everything clear let's finish with a demonst demonstration on uh, the transitions for example let's go with here let's go with a wipe transition notice it gives me a preview of what the transition would look like okay let's go with a push for this one a another push for this one let's go with a split for this one a reveal for this one let's go with the shape for this one I'm only to uh, trying them out so you can see the previews okay you can use peel off like this I told you when you click on this little arrow right here you can get more styles let's go with an airplane transition uncover okay Cut. let's use a fade for this one another push for this one random bars for this one And the final one has a curtains transition okay this is the one okay let's give it a final look okay we have the first transition the second transition we have our animations okay the third transition another transition another transition like so
notice here we have the final transition which is a curtains transition and here if you notice I've inserted a hyperlink on this text okay click here I've written click here and then selected the text click here and then I inserted a hyperlink that redirects you to what the hint says youtube.com Mohammed Idris Amesh video slash videos let's go there for example let's click here it takes you to the YouTube channel containing the videos okay is everything clear do you have any questions if not uh, let's let's go uh, to the presentation concerning Microsoft Word okay let's finish off with Microsoft Word okay We have an introduction, then some general stuff, the file tab, the insert tab, the layout tab, the references tab, okay? Introduction, introduction. Microsoft Word is a program within Microsoft Office Suite. It is used to write every kind of document, letters, memoirs, books, etc. To open Word, you either double click on the icon on the desktop or search for Word in the Windows Explorer menu and click on it once. Same thing with Excel and PowerPoint. General stuff, some general stuff here. We can change the font type using this drop down menu. We can change the font size, we can make the text bold, italic, or underlined. Okay, here we can change the text alignment. Uh, these uh, lines here give you a preview of what the alignment of your text will be like. Okay, so change the text positioning or, or uh, alignment this uh, uh, using these two right here we can uh, do a bulleted or numbered list okay to apply any changes to an existing text you must first select the text and then click on what you want to apply to it okay simple enough to start writing, writing with uh, changes applied, you click on what you want to be applied and your text uh, on your to your text, and then you start writing. So what we mean by this is, let's, for example, let's open up Microsoft Word. For example, let's write a simple text. Is so and so okay if we want to apply changes to this text we select the text and then apply the changes okay we can change the font we can do all sorts of stuff okay we can underline it put in italics we can change the color of the outline okay um, also, if we were want, for example, to start writing in this style, for example, let's undo all the changes here. Now, if I want to start writing with the changes apply, I applied I choose I first make the changes the changes won't be applied to any text that I've written previously notice this text right uh, st stays as is but whatever I write after it will be changed okay For example
Okay, so that's what we mean with the changes are applied to the text. Okay, the file tab, the file tab groups every option relating to Word files like opening a new or existing document, saving the current document as Word document or, or as an, uh, uh, another format like PDF, printing a document. For example, this is a preview of uh, the file tab. Notice here we have open, we have new, we have save, save as, print, share, and so on. Okay. Here we have a list of recently opened documents. Okay. We can browse the docu uh, our computer to open specific documents. For example, Let's try this here. Let's go to the file tab and then click on open and then browse. This gives us a, a window. We can, for example, open documents like so. Okay. As we can, for example, save as. Let's choose a place where to save this. And we can save it as a Word document or as different formats for example let's choose pdf let's save this as pdf now it opens the the document as a pdf okay notice here we can't edit this document because it's a pdf document okay and finally let's check out the print interface here you have your printers available printers copies how many copies of this you want to print print all pages you have different options okay and so on let's exit out of this don't save let's continue the insert tab the insert tab groups all all the options related to adding shapes pictures and other add-ons to your document okay you can insert page breaks which move moves us to uh, the, the next page we can insert page numbers at the top or the bottom of the page for example let's check it out let's go with a blank document let's go straight to the insert tab let's select for example pictures let's insert this picture or we can also insert page breaks, insert page breaks. We moved on to another page this way. Okay. We can insert shapes, for example. We can change the filling of the shape. We can resize the shape by grabbing these white dots here, like so. We can move the shape whenever we have, we click on anywhere in the shape, inside the shape and move it like so. We can also rotate the shape by grabbing this circular icon and Dragging across like so. Um, let's continue. Move to the next page. We can insert pictures. Insert an online picture. It searches for pictures online to insert them. Insert a shape. To insert a shape on an image. We've seen this just now. Go to the insert tab, click on pictures or shapes, select the desired picture or shape, and then insert, click on insert in case of a picture. Or in case of a, sh of a shape, you press the left mouse button and drag across to resize the shape. Okay? Grab the, the white points and drag to resize the shape. 
grab the circular uh, the circle and move to re rotate the shape grab anywhere else on the shape and drag to move or reposition the shape okay applies to pictures just as well okay the layout tab here we can change the page margins we can change the orientation we can choose a number of columns the number of columns in a page okay let's first check out the tab right here we have let's for example let's delete this shape here let's for example change the orientation of the page okay here we are on landscape orientation we can choose the number of columns in the page okay let's go with two columns for example let's write something some gibberish just to show you how columns work okay whenever I reach the end of the page it uh, it, it starts to write on the second column okay whenever the first column is uh, is over it starts to write on the second column okay just to show you uh, how it works okay the references tab in this tab we find how to insert a table of contents okay this is very important please uh, focus with me just follow along before we learn we learn about the table of contents we must first learn about the heading styles okay heading styles can be found in the home tab these styles are, are used to write chapters sections and subsection titles okay these styles are hierarchical meaning that each style is used to entitle a different level of documents of the document structure for example we know that the, uh, for example, in case of a memoir, the uh, top level uh, uh, of uh, of the document, we uh, at the top we have chapters. Every chapter contains multiple sections. Each section contains multiple subsections. That will that that's what what I mean by uh, the term hierarchical. Okay. So. Uh, here this is a representation this is in the home tab we have the heading styles we use heading one to entitle chapters or to write chapter titles we use heading two style to entitle sections we use the heading three style to entitle the subsections okay so you need to first write your uh, the titles of your chapter and sections and subsections in these heading styles in order for you to be able to insert a table of contents okay here to insert a table of contents this uh, uh, this in in the case of uh, th that you uh, for example you've written everything you've completed your document it is well structured well put together you used heading one style for chapters, you used heading two style for sections, you used heading three style for, for subsections. Then, if you want to go and insert, uh, for example, a table of contents, you go to the top of your document and then you move to the references tab, click on the table of contents icon here, it gives you different styles. You have contents uh, automatic table one automatic table two and if you have different uh, for example uh, hierarchies uh, on in your document for example you want to index four levels you don't want to just index chapters and sections and subsections you want to go even deeper than that you create a custom table of contents here okay For the video courses click here and thank you for your attention if you want we can take a final look uh, uh, about the on the table of contents example
for example here we have chapter here we have a section for example I've used heading one style to entitle this chapter I've used heading two style to entitle this section okay okay chapter 3 where is chapter 3 chapter 3 doesn't contain any sections okay any sections here notice we used heading 3 style meaning that this part here calculations is a subsection of chapter 3 okay if for example let's go and add another section here just a moment let's go and add a section for example let's call it Section one. Let's go with arithmetics. Let's say this chapter contains a single section that contains, uh, for example, arithmetic. Okay. Let's remove the S and get rid of this error. Okay. This uh, uh, word, then, if I try to insert the table of contents, uh, word will take this to mean that the chapter 3 contains, contains only one section, and this section contains two subsections, calculations and tables, okay? Okay, we have chapter 4 which is empty for example let's for example let's remove this one let's delete remove the table of contents okay let's insert it once more okay our document is uh, apparently well structured this is only an example okay let's go to the references tab and then Click on automatic table one, for example. It inserts the table of contents for us. Okay, now notice here uh, in chapter three, we used to have only the chapter and then uh, the subsections. Okay, we didn't have sections. Now, when I added this one, we have a different section which is called arithmetic. Okay, now if for example, I made any changes to this table of contents. For example, let's go ahead and remove this one. We have to click on this or update table. Click on update table here or here. Doesn't really matter. Okay? We can update page numbers only or update the entire table. Uh, the cases where uh, you want to update the page numbers only or the entire table uh, just rests on, for example, if I added a new chapter, a chapter that wasn't there originally, I should update the entire table because I've added a new chapter or in my case I've removed the final chapter, uh, uh, so then I need to update the entire table, okay, not just the, the page numbers, okay. If, for example, I'm modifying inside the chapter or inside the section or inside the subsection, but uh, the only thing that has changed in the structure of this document is the page numbers, because I've had I haven't added any chapters, sections, or subsections. I haven't removed any, so I can get away with only updating the page numbers. Okay. Let's. For example, let's now take a look at a custom table of contents. For example, here, when I clicked on custom table of contents, now 
here notice show levels it only shows me three levels okay i can go with uh, with two levels two levels meaning it will index uh, uh, chapters and sections it wouldn't show the subsections okay let's try it yes let's replace this one notice that the subsections are no longer here because my, uh, i've told uh, word be, uh, that i need only two levels to be indexed the chapters and the sections the subsections won't, won't be indexed okay let's go with automatic table one now the sections and the subsections are indexed do you guys have any questions okay so the form of uh, the the exam i've to told you uh, already uh, uh, the, there will be uh, true or false questions uh, some questions that you should answer based on your understanding of what we've seen here and uh, for example multiple choice questions for example uh, okay before i forget let's uh, take a look at the shortcuts okay some keyboard shortcuts this should be uh, pretty uh, quick and straightforward okay we have control plus a means select all for example control plus a notice here it selects everything selects all okay control and then a selects everything control s saves the file for example let's go with a new file for example, let's go with a new file, a Word document. Let's write some gibberish and then let's click on Control plus S. Here it takes me to the Save As uh, section of the uh, Home tab. Okay, it is short for Save. Control S is short for Save. Okay. Now we have Control C means copy. Let's, for example, select this one and click on Control plus C. Control plus C means copy. Okay. Control plus V main means paste. Let's try to paste this uh, text here. Control V. Notice here it pasted this text as is. Okay. Let's go with Control plus X, which is short for cut. It removes the text, like so. Let's paste it in another document. For example, let's go with this one, Table of Contents. Let's go with Control V. It pastes the text that we've removed from the first document, okay? We had Control plus C equals copy here. We selected it and then uh, pressed on Control plus a, plus X, it removed the text, cut it, cut the text, and then we used Control V to paste the text in the second document. Okay. We have Control P is short for print. For example, Control P. Here we have the print layout for a PDF. If you if we used this for a Word document, Control P. Control P, it takes, takes us to the print layout. Okay. We have Control plus I uh, for italicizing text. It, it has the same function with this one. Okay. Let's go with Control plus I and let's write something. Notice the text is italicized. Okay, let's increase the font size so you can see. 
the text is italicized if we remove this one the text goes back to normal okay we have control plus b control plus b for bold okay Notice this text is bold because I clicked on Control B and Control plus U is for underlining the text. Okay. Is everything clear? Uh, before we go, uh, do you know uh, which uh, w at what time you will start the exams? The exam, sorry. Have the department told you uh, at what time and where you will pass the exam? Yes, sir. It's actually tomorrow. Yes. At 4, 4 p.m. It's tomorrow. Yes. Yes, 4 p.m. Okay. I guess one of the amphitheaters. Yes. Uh, one for uh, the uh, uh, middle school uh, teachers and one for the secondary school teachers. Okay? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so do you have any questions? If not, uh, let me which I wish get you. no. Oh. You clarified everything. Sir. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem, no problem. You're welcome. Okay, um, uh, uh, sir, one more question, please. Sorry. Yes, please go ahead. We have like a bunch of videos. I guess three videos you have like already uploaded your in your like YouTube channel. Yes. So are we like required to watch them? All? No, no, no. You are required. Uh, the PDF yes. is uh, no, already I've, enough. Uh, the the uh, the materials that I have sent you should be enough. Okay, they should be enough, but uh, they are summaries. Okay, they haven't. Uh, they aren't. Uh, how shall I say this? Uh, they don't encompass everything in detail, okay? But uh, they should be enough. In addition to this, uh, to the uh, last two videos, okay? Uh, the last two videos we've uh, seen. Uh, the last, not the last two videos. The last video and this one, which I'm about to upload uh, when we get off, okay? Yes. Uh, so uh, for those of you who don't have internet they should only uh, re uh, like review uh, the materials that I have sent you I've sent you one about Microsoft Word the second about Microsoft Excel and today uh, I've sent you the one about Microsoft PowerPoint okay they should be enough uh, yes. for you to to review from okay uh, appreciate it thank you so much no problem no yeah, problem thank you so good much luck. Sir. good luck to you okay Let, uh, we're gonna meet tomorrow and uh, see what questions you still have okay uh, hopefully the yes. exam is uh, is uh, straightforward it is easy it is not complicated uh, so I expect you to do really well in in this exam okay so good luck and inshallah we got 20 inshallah inshallah why not inshallah okay good luck and uh, we meet tomorrow inshallah